Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Nate here back with a second Hackintosh video for you guys. In this one I'll be covering the components that I chose for my system and why. So to get started, uh, this is the Corsair 650D case. I chose it because it's got great build quality and I like the fact that it's got that side window so I can show off the components on the inside of the system. Now accessing those components is actually really easy. All you have to do is press down on those two notches there at the top and you can go ahead and remove the side panel. So with that as an introduction, I'll go ahead and adjust the camera so we can take a look at the components on the inside. So here's a closer look at the system and I'll start off by talking to you guys about the CPU that I chose. Uh, the CPU is located right under that square that says uh, Corsair on it and the CPU that I chose for this system is the Core i7-3770K. This is from the Ivy Bridge lineup so it's from the same, li same lineup of CPUs that are in all of the Macs that Apple refreshed this year and this is the highest end consumer model uh, from the Ivy Bridge lineup. So uh, the i7 model has hyper threading technology which allows your computer to see the four physical cores that it has on the CPU as well as an additional four virtual cores and that really helps uh, out with any sort of rendering that you might be doing if you're uh, editing photos or videos. So if you're not doing anything intensive like that, you can go with the 3570K. That's an i5 CPU, uh, which um, is going to be great for anyone who might be doing gaming or they're just doing basic you know, tasks like browsing the web, email. Um, they might be doing you know, some basic photo or basic video editing, but nothing, you know, all that intensive. So you can save your, uh, the 3570K, or 3570K is cheaper than 3770K. So if you don't need the hyper threading, uh, you can get that uh, cheaper CPU and save yourself um, some money. Now, I, uh, the K at the end of the name of the 3570K and the 3770K means it's an unlocked processor. So I was able to overclock mine and mine's currently clocked at, in at 4.3 gigahertz. Typically, uh, the i7 model has a base clock of 3.5 and then a turbo boost clock of 3.9. So I was able to squeeze out that extra performance by overclocking it. Uh, so that allows me to achieve better uh, performance for my CPU than what you could with a genuine uh, iMac computer. So if you don't want to overclock your system, you can go with a 3570 or a 3770 and you can save yourself about 20 bucks. However, I recommend overclocking it because you know the 20 bucks I think is worth that additional performance. Since you're paying that much for a CPU anyway, you might as well get the, over, uh, the overclockable uh, model. Now I said there was that Corsair square that you see on top of it. That is my Corsair H60 water cooling unit. So um, basically that keeps the CPU cool, keeps the temperatures down, which allowed me to achieve that 4.2 uh, overclocked. Uh, the next component that I'll talk to you guys then about is the motherboard. So the motherboard is basically what you see in the background. It's what all of these components here are connected to and the motherboard allows all those components to communicate with each other and work properly. So when you're building a system, you know the, the, the money that you want to put most towards is your CPU, your graphics card, and your motherboard. Now for your motherboard, it really comes down to what options you're looking for your, with your computer. Uh, for example, if you want to install you know, multiple graphics cards, you want to make sure you have enough PCI slots to put those in. Uh, you want to take a look at how many SATA ports it has. So if you're going to install a hard drives, DVD drives, things like that. Um, you want to see how much uh, RAM it supports. So if you want to use you know, a whole bunch of RAM, you want to make sure your motherboard can handle that. Um, you know, just, just basically it comes down to what your personal needs are. Uh, you want to take a look at the rear I.O. Now, the reason I chose this specific motherboard is it's a Gigabyte brand name. 
Uh, Gigabyte is great for building a Hackintosh because it uh, supports, uh, it actually is natively supported by uh, Lion right out of the box. It's very, very easy to set up. You can use other manufacturers like Asus, um, MSI, uh, things like that. However, it's not as easy to set up. It requires some more uh, man software manipulation on your part to get that system up and running. So because this is my first Hackintosh, I wanted to go with an easy setup. And the re reason I chose this specific Gigabyte uh, motherboard is because it has two Thunderbolt ports on it, just like uh, a genuine Apple iMac. Next up is RAM. So you can see the two uh, RAM sticks that I have right there next to the Corsair water cooler. Those are two eight gigabyte sticks uh, made by Corsair and it's got a speed of 1600. So the same exact RAM speed that you could get uh, with the Mac that was released this year. So eight gigabytes of RAM, I would say is, you know, uh, is what uh, Macs or the iMac is shipping with right now. So if you're gonna build a Hackintosh, I would say at least go with eight gigabytes of RAM. I would say 16, you know, is uh, a bit future proof, but it, I, in my opinion, it's the sweet spot for me because, you know, applications like Final Cut Pro 10 uh, definitely eat that stuff up. And the more RAM you have, uh, the more applications you'll be able to run at one time uh, while still having, you know, a system that's running smoothly. Next, the next component I'll talk about is my power supply. So the power supply is what provides power uh, to your computer. So you'll see all those wires that I've got in there uh, plugged in. Those wires will be routed through the back of the case and then it might be brought out front and connected to different things on the motherboard. It'll plug into my graphics card as well as my hard drive. Just basically everything that needs power, uh, those cables will you know, provide it uh, to whatever component needs it. Um, now, in terms of a power supply, there are two types. There are modular and non-modular. Uh, this is a modular power supply. So what that means is that all of those cables that you see plugged into there, I can remove. Uh, with a non-modular power supply, all those cables are installed in there and you can't remove them. So if you don't need an additional power cable, uh, you won't be able to remove it. So definitely go with a modular one. It'll be easier for your cable management and things like that. So you only have to use uh, the cables that you need. Now, in terms of the power supply I have, it's the H6 HX 650 watt power supply by Corsair. Um, depending on you know how many, like if you've got multiple graphics cards in your system, of course you're going to need more power to power each of those cards. So you probably want to go with a you know a, a power supply that has more wattage. Uh, for me, 650 watts, which is just fine. Uh, there are online calculators that you can use to kind of determine you know how much uh, wattage would be good for you to make sure uh, that you have enough power for everything. Last but not least, then I just wanted to talk about the case lights that I have installed on this system. So it might be kind of hard to see with the camera and the reflection from the, the case window, but it's a blue uh, LED. There's two bars that I installed onto um, this side panel here, and uh, there's a switch then on the back that I can use to turn those on and off. So let me just show you what that looks like uh, when I turn it off. Of course, you know, you can't really see it now um, with the camera settings that I have, but um, it looks really cool at nighttime and, you know, it was only about $6. So that's also something that you can get uh, if you get a case like this with the side window. Moving on, then I'll talk to you guys about the hard drives I have in my system. So the first is a uh, SanDisk 250 gig SSD. It's kind of hard to see there, but it's just that rectangle uh, sitting in this drive bay right there. And then below that, uh, this right here is a one terabyte Seagate hard drive. Um, so basically the 240 gigabyte SSD I partitioned in half. So 120 gigs goes to my Mountain Lion operating system. And the other 120 gigs goes to Windows 8. And then that's my boot drive for both of those systems. So I install uh, most of my applications and everything on there so it runs really really fast and then anything like media you know things like that like movies videos uh, documents that's all installed on the one terabyte hard drive because it doesn't really benefit from the faster speeds of the uh, SSD you can uh, set up a, a fusion drive for a uh, Hackintosh um, however I like to be able to manage those files or, or decide what's on which drive and not have you know fusion drive decide that for me so uh, I, I don't have that currently set up on there, but that is an option if you're interested. So now that I've talked about all the uh, internal components of this system, I wanted to give you guys a tour of the rest of the case. So on the front here, we've got a power switch as well as a hard drive light uh, activity indicator. And then if we open up this flap right here, there are two USB 2.0 or 3.0 ports in blue, and then audio in and out, two USB 2.0 ports, and then a firewire port. So we'll close that back up. Then here, this is an ASUS uh, DVD drive. It can read uh, and write uh, CDs and DVDs. And then this is a NZXT uh, card reader. So it can read my SD cards for my camera and things like that. And it's got uh, another two USB 3.0 ports. Let me go ahead and just move the camera down a little bit then. And right here, I've got spots for two more drive bays. So if I wanted to install like another 
uh, DVD drive or something like that, you can put that in there. Then moving to the bottom of the case here, uh, you can see there's the Corsair logo. This panel right here actually pops up if you push in on it, and there's actually a fan uh, right under there. Put that back on. And then uh, here are just some stickers that came with some of the system components that I bought. For example, uh, with the 3770K, I got the Intel sticker, uh, the SanDisk SSD, they gave me that sticker there. Uh, with the Corsair water cooler, I was getting that, and then the Gigabyte sticker for my motherboard. And here's just a quick look at the entire front of the case. Taking a look at the next side of the case then, uh, this is where all of your cables and uh, stuff would be routed through the back. So you could access those cables by just pressing on those two notches here on the side panel to remove the side door. And cable management is very, very easy with this case because there's a lot of cable grommets. Uh, so that was uh, relatively painless. So that's also something to consider when you're purchasing a case. Taking a look at the rear eye of the case, we've got VGA, DVI, and HDMI output. Uh, we've got two uh, USB 3.0 ports there in blue. Uh, right here then we've got another two uh, USB 2.0 ports. That little dongle I have right there is for uh, Bluetooth. Um, then there's an eSATA port there in red. Two more USB 3.0 ports in blue. Uh, if I push these down you can see the Ethernet uh, cable right there. And then right here we've got the two Thunderbolt uh, inputs and then all of my audio options uh, down there at the bottom. Moving on down then, uh, you can see this is my uh, wireless card that I've installed here with the motherboard and these are the three antennas, so if I push those up uh, like that, that'll give me the uh, wireless connectivity. And then right here, this is the uh, GeForce GTX 680, so this sticks out here on the back of the case. And this is where I would actually plug in my monitor, so uh, the DVI input that I use goes right there. There's also HDMI, a display port, and a second DVI port uh, right there. And then here's the switch then for those blue case lights that I mentioned earlier. At the very bottom of the system then, this is my Corsair HX650 watt power supply. So you've got the switch to turn that on and off there, and then the cable uh, that plugs in from the back of the power supply into your wall outlet. So to finish up this case tour, we'll take a look at the top of the case. Right here we've got this slot that'll go open up. And uh, right in here, it's kind of hard to see, but you can actually install a hard drive. So if I've got a friend over and I want to access the files on his hard drive, I don't have to hook it up to my motherboard with a, a SATA and power cable. I can just go ahead and uh, plug that in directly right there and go ahead and access those files. Uh, also in here, you won't be able to see this on camera, but there's a switch that I can use to control the fan speed. So I showed you that fan earlier on the front of the case, and then there's also this fan uh, located right under here. So that's a three control uh, fan switch, so uh, low, uh, low fan speed, uh, medium fan speed, and high fan speed. So that's going to finish it up for this case tour uh, and a uh, look at the components on the inside of my system. Let me know what you guys think about this computer in a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.